If you'd like online business explained to you in a way that you can actually understand, go to latenightim.com forward slash explain. It's completely free and I made it just for you. Now, how about an episode? Episode 103. Late Night Internet Marketing. This week on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast, we get back on the mic after a long summer's nap. We're going to talk about finding your niche and the criteria that you need to put against that and all the crazy things we have planned for this fall. All this and more on the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. The Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. You've been working for somebody else, but you want a business to run yourself. You want to know how to start where to begin can you get out your comfort zone my friend yes you can do it right when it's late at night at the end of the day your dreams burning inside so keep it up and you will find that you're building your business one night at a time and now Broadcasting late at night from a little studio in the big state of Texas, your host, Mark Mason. Hey, hey, really great to be back on the mic. Of course, my name is Mark Mason. I am your host, and this is the podcast about how to start and grow an internet business on the side. Usually we talk about affiliate marketing here, but there's all kinds of ways that you can grow your internet business, and we talk about them right here. Well, summertime's been over. It's been a while since I've been on the mic, and I have had a crazy summer. You know, I am uh, sort of a full transparency guy here at Late Night Internet Marketing, and we have just been rocked by events in my family over the summer that just have completely derailed everything. And I think probably in episode 105, one of the things that we're going to talk about is what you do when you're a solo entrepreneur and your life gets knocked completely off the track. There's ways to recover and things you need to do, and we'll talk about that in episode 105. In my case, we just had a crazy summer. First of all, my dad has been battling cancer since, uh, well, really over the last 20 years, and we finally lost him on July 1st. And uh, I, my dad and I are very, were very close. It was a very difficult time for me and my mother and uh, our my brother and our extended family. And so when those uh, kinds of things happen, that really brings everything into focus and you tend to really uh, niche down, if you will, to the things that matter most, which for me was taking care of mom and getting affairs in order and so forth. And and quite frankly, sometimes when those kind of things are going on, it's a little bit hard to get fired up about things like turning on the mic and, and putting out a podcast. And that's something that you know, I think uh, is understandable. I, I don't offer it as an excuse. It's just that's really what happened. And then exactly a month later, my dad's mom passed away. So I lost my grandmother and my dad in the span of a month. So it was just a crazy, crazy summer. Now, on top of that, you you throw throw down some family vacations and lots of other things that are going on. and And it's just been nuts. But I am back. And the kids are back in school. We're back on a regular schedule. Things are looking good. My fall Little League baseball team is up and running. We won our first game 11-4, to so uh, things are good. For those of you that were anticipating the release of my niche website course, the affiliate marketing course that's going to be coming out called Late Night Affiliate, that course is still in the works, still planned. People who sign up on the early list over at latenightaffiliate.com are still going to get ridiculously low pricing, introductory pricing for that. When it comes out, it will be coming out this fall, but it's late for the same reason that I just gave. You know, it's just my life has, uh, you know, taken, took a left turn there. We're back on the road now. So if you are interested in 
understanding the right way to start an affiliate marketing website online. That course will be launching in the fall, and you're welcome to sign up to get notifications over at latenightaffiliate.com. Today, though, I want to start with dealing with some feedback that I got from some previous episodes regarding niche selection. And now, and now. it's time to hear what listeners just like you are thinking. Late night listener feedback. 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 So this listener, Dalip, I, and I'm sure I am mispronouncing his name, uh, writes, I am really stuck at selecting my niche. I think some of my ideas, and then after some time, I feel it will not work. And thus, I have almost run out of ideas. If you can give more examples of what are the possibilities of a niche, it would be really helpful. So thanks to Leap for that. I appreciate that feedback. Here's a couple of things to think about in terms of niche selection um, before we get into some details maybe about how to exactly select your niche, which we will discuss in the main segment today. The first thing I would say is you absolutely should not stress out about picking your niche, especially if it's the first time that you've tried to get in internet business. You know, one of the things that we see all the time is that people have a genuine desire to build a small business online, and they've been told that they need to pick a niche. And you would think they were, uh, you know, donating a kidney. I mean, it's just like a crazy high pressure thing where they're trying to pick the right niche and, uh, you know, they're just not sure what to do. And, and let me say, it is a real, a really important decision. And it, possibly is one of the more important decisions that you're going to make, but it's not the end of the world. If you don't exactly get it right, you can adjust on the fly. We've seen lots of people who have selected niches and then understood that they were wrong and started over. And so it's not like you're committing to this for the rest of your life. And 45 years from now, you're still going to be working in this niche, regretting your choice. It does help though, to make a good decision and, I think the other way I can take pressure off of you to is to tell you there's not a magical niche. You know, I, I hear people looking for the low competition. Nobody's ever heard of niche before that they can go out and dominate. That's just magically high profit. And because they kind of like prospecting for gold, because they found this, this, abandoned gold mine that nobody knew about and and they can sneak in there and may build a $200,000 a year business based on a niche that nobody knows about because they were so clever about selection. That kind of magic, that's very unusually rare. I mean, that doesn't happen. We know what's out there. We know what people are buying. The fact that people are buying means that these niches are not a secret because people are out there buying the products. And while some niches are definitely better than others from a competition standpoint and from a profit standpoint, it's definitely there's definitely not this magical criteria out there where you're just going to find this thing that just starts dumping money into your bank account. So all of this pressure about making a mistake or, or finding a niche that's good enough, it's probably best to set that aside. Now, the other thing that uh, Dalip asks is, well, gosh, I keep running out of ideas for niches. I don't understand, you know, how to come up with all these ideas. And I think, you know, the simple thing that I can tell you is that from an affiliate marketing standpoint, anything that is being sold period, full stop, anything that is being sold represents a possible niche. I've talked before about uh, my buddy uh, who has a website about uh, helping people work better with their pharmacists and addressing pharmacy questions over at uh, helpfulpharmacist.com. We've talked about possible niches, and there are lots of very interesting things in the pharmacy niche. I'll just give you one example, one that I've uh, messed with before, blood pressure monitors. You know, these these things that you go in and you put them on your arm, 
and they tell you what your blood pressure is. That's a very important device for a lot of people who are trying to maintain their blood pressure and track it over time and talk to their physician about the results that they get on a day-to-day basis. Because when you're in the doctor's office, that's one data point maybe once a month or whatever. But if you can track your blood pressure every day or maybe twice a day, that really can help your doctor understand what's going on. So these are important devices, and they come in a wide range of capabilities, all the way from the most simple ones that are completely manual that you that you wrap around your lit, uh, your arm and pump up with a little bulb and listen to your pulse with a stethoscope. By the way, if, if you've never learned how to take blood pressure, you should do that. It's kind of fun. What the doctor's doing or the nurse is doing is listening for your uh, blood pressure to start pulsing and to stop pulsing. That's the, the, the low number and the big number um, effectively. And it, it, it sounds like this kind of squishing sound. The, the, you can hear the blood start to be restricted when, it very, when you very first start to hear it. And then eventually the cuff gets so tight that uh, the blood can't get by anymore. And those are the two numbers. Anyway, a little aside there for you guys. But these blood pressure cuffs... Um, they have an amazing range of capabilities and they get very expensive. And for example, I have a Withings uh, blood pressure cuff that I've been using for a very long time. That's really cool. It's Bluetooth enabled. It talks to my phone and it automatically logs its data to the Withings app online. It also talks to health kit on my iPhone and it shows up in a bunch of my other apps. And if I take my blood pressure regularly, then but when I go into the doctor, I can print that thing out. And if you go to late night, im.com forward slash blood pressure, you can see that blood pressure cuff. It's really cool. Bluetooth enabled blood pressure cuff. That's a really good example of a niche. You could build an entire website based on blood pressure monitors. And maybe an even better one would be an entire website based on monitors. You could do reviews of different thermometers that you know you measure your body temperature with. You could do blood pressure monitors, and you could do blood glucose monitors and so forth. All of these things are for sale. Most of them are for sale on the internet, and you could write articles that help people learn how to use them, describe what the features are, answer frequently asked questions like how long do the batteries last and what's the software I can use and, and, and give people advice about which ones to buy in different situations. Those are very helpful kinds of topics that you can address. And that's just one of a million examples. So, um, Dilip, what I would say is it's impossible to run out of niches. I think what you're looking for is the cross product between something that's available to monetize to help people with and something that you're at least mildly interested in. And that's going to be the topic of our main segment today is really how to narrow down this long list of niches that we talked about in a previous episode and select the one that's right for you. Dilip, I hope that's helpful. Please don't hesitate to contact me with a follow-up question if you have one. It's time to get to work. One night at a time. One night at a time. Okay, now for the main segment today, I want to talk a little bit about what I teach in the late night affiliate course about how to niche down and select your first niche or to niche down and niche in general. So, you know, I think the way to think about these niches, in a previous episode, we talked about how to brainstorm niches And I'll just expand that a little bit. I'll put a link to that episode in the show notes. And I'll expand that idea a little bit and just say, if you're looking for a niche and you need ideas, just go browse around on Amazon. I mean, that will give you a zillion ideas from barbecue grills to blood pressure monitors to sewing equipment to lawn and garden stuff to telescopes to you know, uh, hunting knives. I mean, there's just like an, a billion things that that are related to something that you might be interested in. Camping equipment. Maybe you love to camp. Well, there's a ton of camping equipment for sale on Amazon. And you can go back to episode 98 
Uh, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes, or you can go to late night. com forward slash zero nine eight to hear all about how to find a niche for affiliate marketing. And once you've got that long list of niches, you know, there's this question of how do you pick one? Because I definitely do not recommend that you go off and start 14 different websites. I have been down that road. I'm still on that road some days. I have been trying to uh, narrow that down, and that's something we're going to talk about in a coming episode about this idea of having the one thing that you're trying to make make work. Or as my friend uh, Lynn Terry over at Click News says, work on something from start to profit. Work on one thing. Um, so I recommend that you pick one. And what I teach in Late Night Affiliate is a, sort of a an evaluation matrix that you can use. And let me just, without going into all the detail of exactly how to do that, let me just tell you kind of what the idea is here. Basically, for every niche, I recommend that you evaluate a couple of key areas and then look at all those areas together. I actually offer a mathematical formula in the course, a really simple one, to kind of score these niches in terms of their quality for you personally. Because that matters here. I mean, one one thing that matters is, is this a good niche? And that's just kind of a question about the commercial viability of the niche. But another question is, is this a good niche for you? And that, especially for your first website, that is a really important question. And so, you know, there's some areas that I think you need to think about. First level is, and I think this is really important, and this is something that's been debated hotly over the years, but I think for your very first website, you need to gauge your personal level of interest on a niche. And I'll give you the example of, of a, a niche that I've often thought about getting into, and that's the, the niche of youth baseball. What's my personal level of interest in youth baseball? Well, I coach a team of 11 kids that are under 10 years old, and we play baseball, and I do that twice a week, and we play on Saturdays. I am very interested in youth baseball. My nine-year-old son, Zachary, he wants to talk about baseball, and he is the biggest Texas Rangers fan that you can possibly imagine. We have Texas Rangers baseball card collection and all this kind of stuff going on around baseball and specifically youth baseball. So my personal level of interest in youth baseball is really high. So I think one of the things that you need to gauge when you're building your first site is what is your personal level of interest? And then the second thing I think you need to address are is whether or not there is a way to generate content about this site. And I would ask two questions in particular. One is, can you name some big topic areas in your site that, that would be relevant for your site? So in my case, for youth, youth baseball, the topics, you know, there are certainly some big topics that you can, you can imagine on a youth baseball affiliate site. How to run a great practice and all of the topics around that. I mean, there are entire books and websites and magazines around this idea of how to run a good youth baseball practice. It's, it's not the easiest thing in the world, I will tell you. Another kind of example that you can come up with for youth baseball has to do with how to manage parents and how to, how to manage the team and the technology around managing the team. For my youth baseball team, we use an amazing app called Team Snap. And if you are out there in uh, youth sports land and you've and you're coaching and you've not discovered this thing called Team Snap, highly recommended. This is an amazing app. You can write about how to manage the team and how to run it. The other app that we use for statistics, just like Major League Baseball statistics that you see on base percentage and slugging percentage and batting average and all that, we use an app called Game Changer. So this whole idea of how to manage teams and the tools and tricks that you can use to manage your team, that's another example of a big topic in that niche of baseball, youth baseball. And so the question is, do you have big topics in your niche? And another obvious one, of course, is going to be the different kind of things that you need 
in order to be successful uh, in baseball, gloves and bats and equipment and stuff. And that's where the affiliate relationship is going to come in. So do you have areas in the niche that you're considering that you can write about? And I think once you identify those areas, that gets you to the next question and sort of the next level down is for each one of those areas, do you have, you know, a handful of topics or questions that immediately come to your mind that fit in that box? So for example, if you were sitting down and having coffee with a friend and talking about youth baseball and how to manage the parents or how to run an effective practice do you have, you know, really good ideas right off the top of your head of questions that you either do or don't know the answer to right now that would constitute really good, you know, topics of discussion? What's the best infield practice? You know, what's the best, what are the best infield drills? What are the five best infield drills? What can I do with my outfielders? How can I help young players bat better? What do I do if I've got a kid who doesn't throw very well? How can I teach someone who doesn't know how to throw very well to throw and so on and so forth. And so for each one of those big areas, how to run a team, how to run a good practice, so on and so forth, are there a handful of questions that immediately come to your mind? If you've got that, if you've got some big topic areas, let's call them blog categories for lack of a better phrase. And you've got several topics that come to mind right out of the gate that are relevant to those categories, you've got this question of content sort of covered. You you know that you'll be able to create content for this niche. And that's important because what we're typically talking about doing in a niche is creating content, creating value through content, and converting those readers into sales of some sort. And so you need to be able to generate a considerable amount of content in order to to participate in this kind of online space with content marketing. But once you've got a, a niche selected that you're, I mean, you've got, you've assessed your interest in a niche and, you know, check, I'm interested. And you've decided that your niche is full of things to talk about content check. Then the next question is, is it commercially viable? You know, are there products out there that people are selling online and and making money. And again, going back to baseball, if you go to Amazon and simply Google, uh, or rather uh, search for in Amazon, these different kinds of products like gloves and bats and and other kinds of equipment, training equipment and so forth, you'll find there's all kinds of stuff. And, and, And it's not enough just to have products, in my opinion. We talked about this a little bit before. I think in the case where you're doing product research on Amazon, your Amazon products really need to meet two criteria. One is they need to be of a price that makes them worth selling. You can sell uh, $2 Frisbees on your website and make uh, 16 cents a Frisbee or whatever, but you're not going to do anything that really matters from a monetary point of view selling uh, $2 Frisbees. I mean, I think for you to be successful running an affiliate business, the products that you're selling need to ha- essentially they need to have a three digit price tag in most cases. You know, most many times it can be a very low three digit price tag. And sure, there are exceptions. Maybe a seventy five dollar or fifty dollar product is great. But I think the question you're asking is, are there products in the hundred dollar range or above that are for sale on Amazon? And I think the second question is, are people buying them? And one of the easiest ways to determine whether or not people are buying them is, do you see products that are there that have lots and lots of reviews? We know that a very small percentage of people that actually buy stuff on Amazon leave a review. So if you see a product with two or 300 reviews or 50 or 75 reviews, and they appear to be real reviews, particularly if they a lot of the reviews have the verified Amazon purchaser sticker on the review. That means that for every person that left a review, there's another, I don't know, a hundred people maybe that bought that product and didn't bother to leave a review. I I've shop on Amazon all the time. I bet I've left seven reviews in my entire life. So people don't generally review products on Amazon. 
on average. So if you see a product with a lot of reviews, that means a lot of people are buying it. So there's that kind of test for, for commercial viability. And the other test that you can look at in this way is um, if you Google some phrases, if you go to google.com and type in some phrases like baseball bats for young players or youth baseball bats or youth baseball gloves or baseball gloves for kids, do you see ads on the right-hand side and the top of the Google search results? And increasingly, they've moved those to the top. But do you see listings in Google that are labeled as ads? If you do, that means that someone paid money for those ads. And as we've discussed many times before, marketers only pay for advertising if they're actually making money. So now you've, you've, you're going through this list of niches and you've identified the, the niches in your list that you're interested in, check, that you can imagine creating content for, check, and that seem to be commercially viable, check. And if you've done those things, I think any of those niches are good places to start. Now, there's a lot of other detailed things that you can do that I talk about quite a bit in the course that, you know, kind of get you to the next level of detail. But if you just really want to select a niche, go find something that you're interested in where there's good content that you can create and that where there's some commercial products being sold. And I think once you get all of those, once you get your list down to only items in your niche list of possible niches that meet those criteria, you can pick your favorite one. I mean, I think it really is that simple. Go with your gut and don't stress out about all of this other stuff about whether or not it's the right niche. And I mean, you're not passing this niche down to your grandchildren and generations from now, probably. This is just a, an online business that you're trying to go build And if there are other people making money in that niche, you can do it too. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this episode, episode 103 of the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. Of course, you can absolutely go to latenightim.com forward slash 103 and leave me some comments. Tell me about your niche, what's going on there. Tell me about your niche selection woes and troubles, and I'll try to help you. And, uh, you know, we can talk about this episode. You can also find the show notes at that link, and uh, including links to the other episode, episode 98 that I talked about, where I talk about how to come up with the list in the first place. And by all means, if you're interested in learning more about building affiliate websites on, on a on a greater level of detail, My course will be coming out this fall over at Late Night Affiliate. And if you just want to sign up to be notified as that thing goes along, um, please feel free to go over to latenightaffiliate.com, leave your email address, and I'll kind of, um, I'll be in touch to tell you what's going on with the course. And I've been soliciting feedback from those people about what they'd like to see in the course. So if you want a little behind the scenes look, that's a great way to do it. Okay, so your homework for this week is to get something done on your business. Go do something productive, whether it's picking a niche or working on your existing website. Make something happen this week, and I'll talk to you next week. Ciao. You can do it right when it's late at night. You've been listening to the Late Night Internet Marketing Podcast. Be sure to visit latenightpodcast.com today to leave feedback for Mark. Download special bonus content, access the show notes, and more. See you there. Until then. Until then, go and make some great progress on your internet business. One night at a time. One night at a time. Yeah, it's really great to be back. Um, hope I didn't unload too much on you guys about dad and grandma and all that. It's all good. They're in a better place. We trust in God to take care of them now. Um, dad was, uh, you know, just an amazing man and always took good care of me. And almost everything that's good about what I do is is a result of the things that uh, he taught me as I was growing up. I had a, a charmed childhood 
And uh, that is a guy who I will carry with me every day for the rest of my life. I will talk to you guys next week. Peace out. Hey, it's Mark again. I wanted to tell you one more time about this absolutely free resource that I have for helping people who are trying to get the big picture for internet marketing actually get started and understand what all their choices are. If that's not you, there's no more content. You can skip to the end. But if you're someone who came to this podcast because you're searching for how to get started online and you just can't cut through all the noise, I get it. That was me in 2007 when I was trying to get started. There were so many people throwing offers at me that I really couldn't even understand what all the different business models were. I couldn't understand how money moved around on the internet. And I couldn't really get a grip on what direction I wanted to go in so I could figure out how to move forward. I've created a free video resource for you just for that purpose at latenightim.com forward slash explain. In several short videos, I just explained to you what internet marketing is all about and what online business is all about and the different options that you have for starting an online business. There's nothing to buy there. You just sign up for access and you get the videos just like that. So if that's interesting to you, or if you know someone who's in the same situation, send them that link, latenightim.com forward slash explain, and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear what people are thinking that are in the exact same position that I was in more than a decade ago in 2007. In some ways, it seems like yesterday, and in some ways, it seems like an entire lifetime ago. Again, that's latenightim.com forward slash explain. Late night internet mind.